I'm here in the basement of the physics building where I've discovered something really cool. Um, under the staircase, at the bottom of the staircase, there's a bunch of vintage computer equipment. And I'm going to show you guys what's there. Um, something slightly embarrassing just happened. I got to that pile of equipment just in time for a first year physics lab to uh, go down there. So uh, I kind of just pretended I was just uh, loathing around and I came over here. So uh, there, see there's a pendulum um, hanging at the bottom of the staircase from the ceiling. So they're doing that right now. So uh, I'm going to wait till they leave and then I'll show you the stuff. I found a janitor on the staircase this morning and I asked him if he knew uh, who was in charge of that stuff and he told me that the people who uh, would probably be best to ask about it are apparently people that belong in this laboratory right here. And if we zoom in on the laboratory, if my camera keeps focused properly, I see an Apple Trinitron monitor an old Dell computer and then right there there's an indigo blue iMac so uh, I would guess this is probably the right place this is an electronics laboratory I see a couple of oscilloscopes as well and some other equipment so I've actually written a note that I'm going to take to this door with my email address on it and hopefully a professor or whoever is in charge of that stuff will shoot me an email and tell me whether or not I can acquire any of it. Alright, this is what we have here. We got an Epson dot matrix printer. What looks like a voltage variator. Some sort of DC power supply. That looks like a laser transformer. We get a Tandy CGA monitor. We have a Zenith PC that has a three and a half inch floppy disk drive and a hard drive. And then over here we have a Commodore PET or PET, I'm not sure the correct pronunciation, but this is a pre-PC, pre-Mac computer from like I think the mid 1970s has a built-in CRT display uh, this thing doesn't really interest me I don't have an interest in uh, pre-Mac or pre-PC computers I'm a little, I have a little bit of an interest in Apple II's but that's about it and then over here we have a Macintosh Plus two of them actually uh. There's another one behind it. These are the newer Mac Pluses in the Platinum case that had the improved power supply and more RAM, two or four megabytes. Um, these things are what really interested me. I wanted one of these, so uh, I'm currently trying to talk to the right people to see what's actually gonna happen to all this stuff, because uh, if it's just gonna be thrown away or whatever, I wanna take one of these Macs. There's a Mac floppy disk there, two keyboards, and there's two Macintosh mice as well. Uh, there's an advanced instruments oscilloscope, and this huge thing, Brandon wants this. This is a Hewlett Packard oscilloscope. And other than that, there's a bunch of high voltage power supplies and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's about it. But uh, the interesting things to me here are the PC and the Macs. Um, Brandon and I were down here, we plugged the Macs in and they turned on and appeared to work just fine. They didn't boot because they don't have a hard drive, you need to stick a floppy disk in them, but uh, they did come right on and beep and uh, ask, for a, uh, ask for a boot disk. So that's a good sign, they probably work perfect, I put money on this thing as well as its CGA monitor we plugged this in and it turned on and appeared to work fine but the hard drive is stuck the hard drive didn't spin up but uh, it did make some buzzing noises which means the heads are probably adhered to the platters but it did turn on it made it issued a BIOS code 
or an error code because the CMOS battery is dead but it did turn on and appear to work fine as well as the monitor so that's a good sign I might take this thing too it's pretty darn small it's about like a third of the size of the Epson I'm not sure if this is an 8088 base system or a 286 system it did have a keyboard with it not sure if it's an XT or an AT keyboard because I don't know if this is an XT or AT machine but I literally watched a student one of my uh, fellow classmates come down here steal the keyboard and then come back up I could probably just as well steal one of those Macs but I'm not that kind of guy I want to talk to the right people and make sure this stuff's actually up for grabs or up for the dumpster so yeah basically what I've done so far is I spoke to a staff member who said that I should email the uh, Dean of Physics and ask about this stuff so that's what I did and she uh, suggested that I should hide what I want so other people don't don't find it and take it so I might just take one or both of them max and hide them in a corner over there or something but uh, I guess she said that she thought it's been sitting here since last summer so it's probably safe that uh, keyboard for that Zenith wasn't safe but that's alright, if I take this computer, I have whatever, whatever keyboard it needs. I have an XT keyboard and I have an AT keyboard. So, uh, this unfortunately is not a boot disk. But both of these Macs did turn on and work. There's the other one. Yep. So, uh, that's about it. I'll update you guys on the status of my ability to acquire some of this stuff, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. We've got this Zenith computer with a three and a half. But it did turn on. Uh, I could probably just as well steal. I want to talk to the right people and make sure this stuff 